Hello everyone. Thank you for watching this presentation. Regarding reduction of GHG emissions from international shipping, countermeasures have been deliberated at IMO, and some regulations have been introduced so far, such as EEDI, SCEMP and IMO DCS. Further, at MEPC 76 held in June this year, a new regulation, EEXI, was newly adopted and will be applied from January 1, 2023. In this presentation, we would like to talk about background and outlines of EEXI regulation and preparation for this regulation. These are contents of this presentation. First of all, we will talk about the initial IMO strategy, on reduction of GHG emissions from ships, as the background of EEXI regulation. After that, we will explain about the outlines of this regulation, such as applicability, details of the requirement, and so on. Finally, we will introduce the methods for improving EEXI to achieve the requirement, and the flow of EEXI verification. Then. Firstly, we would like to talk about IMO GHG strategy. The initial IMO GHG strategy was adopted in April 2018. It is the first effort aimed at the GHG zero emissions from global sector, without distinction between developed countries and developing countries. The final target is GHG zero emissions at earliest in this century. In addition, some stepwise targets have also been established. The targets of transportation efficiency compared to 2008 are set as 40% improvement by 2030 and 70% improvement by 2050. Furthermore, the targets of total annual emissions compared to 2008 are set as 50% reduction by 2050, and effort for zero emissions at earliest in this century. In order to achieve the IMO 2030 target, aiming to 40% improvement of transportation efficiency compared to 2008, IMO decided to introduce new measures and adopted the amendments to MARPOL Annex 6 at MEPC 76 held in June 2021. The short-term measures are composed of a technical approach, EEXI, and an operational approach, CII. This presentation focuses on EEXI regulation. Then, we will move on the next chapter. In this chapter, we will explain about the outlines of the EEXI regulation. Attained EEXI is the value calculated by an individual ship, while required EEXI is the allowable maximum value of attained EEXI, for the specific ship type and size. Attained EEXI is required to be equal to or less than required EEXI as shown in this figure. EEXI regulation will be applicable to almost all ships of 400 gross tonnage and above, which are engaged in the international voyages, regardless of ship's delivery date. However, some specific ships as shown here are accepted, as with the case of EEDI. This slide shows the calculation formula of attained DEXI. Attained EEXI is calculated by similar formula as EEDI. The related parameters are CO2 conversion factor, fuel oil consumption, engine power, cargo capacity and ship speed. As with EEDI, EEXI represents CO2 emissions from a ship, when the ship transports one ton cargo for one mile. The formula of EEXI is the same as EEDI, but some parameters definitions are different. First, in terms of SFC, SFC is fuel consumption at 75% MCR of main engine and at 50% MCR of auxiliary engine specified in NOx technical file. 
In cases where the installed engines don't have Knox technical files, approximated default values including margin, SFC APP are available. Next, in terms of engine power PME, PME is 75% of the rated installed power. In cases where EPL is installed, PME is 83% of the limited installed power. Next, in terms of ship speed VREF, VREF is ship speed at PME and under the maximum summer load draft. In cases where both of tank test results and speed trial results are not available, an approximated ship speed including margin, VREF APP is to be calculated by the simple formula. The parameters of this formula are ship type, dead weight, and MCR. Let me explain more about the methods for obtaining the ship's speed VREF. For ship supplied EEDI regulation, there is the approved power curve at the EEDI verification, and this power curve can be used in the EXI calculation. On the other hand, for non EEDI ships, if tank tests, numerical calculations such as CFD or C trials under EEDI draft or design draft are conducted, the ship's speed VREF can be determined by these results. Still, if not, the ship's speed VREF is to be calculated by the simple formula. As with the case of EEDI, the calculation of attained DEXI and conformity to require DEXI apply to these ship type and size, as shown here. For example, in case of bulk carrier, required EEXI applies to ships of 10,000 dead weight and above. Next, we will explain about the calculation method of required DEXI. As with the case of EEDI, required EEXI is determined by using EEDI reference line and the reduction factors, which depends on the ship type and size. EEDI regulation has started from phase 0 and proceeds to phase 1, 2, and 3, according to the contract date and delivery date of each ship. The requirement becomes more and more strict as the phase. On the other hand, in the EXI regulation, there is no concept of phase. So, required level of EEXI is constant and will not become more strict in the future. Required EEXI is almost the same level as required DEDI for new ships as of 2023. EEDI Phase 2 Levels requirement will be applicable to bulk carrier, tanker, vehicle carrier and so on, while Phase 3 Levels requirement will be applicable to container ship, general cargo ship, LNG carrier, gas carrier and cruise passenger ship. However, requirements of some specific ship type and size are relaxed, for technical difficulty to improve the efficiency. This slide shows EEDI reference lines of each ship type. The reference lines are expressed by exponential function of dead weight or gross tonnage. Next, this slide shows the reduction factors of bulk carrier, gas carrier, tanker, and container ship. As we explained before, basically, these are the same level as EEDI requirement as of 2023. However, very large bulk carrier and tanker are relaxed than EEDI Phase 2 level. Also, small and middle container ship are relaxed than EEDI Phase 3 level. These are the reduction factors of other ship types. Roro cargo ship and Roro passenger ship are significantly relaxed than EEDI Phase 2 level. Next, this slide shows the timeline of EEXI regulation. EEXI regulation will be applied from January 1, 2023. For ships delivered before January 1, 2023, the verification will take place at the first annual, 
intermediate, or renewal survey of IAPP certificate, whichever is the first, on or after January 1, 2023. On the other hand, for ships delivered on or after January 1, 2023, the verification will take place at the initial survey of IEE certificate. It means that the verification must be completed by the ship's delivery. Next, this slide shows the relevant guidelines of EEXI regulation. The relevant guidelines of EEXI regulation were adopted at MEPC 76 held in June this year. These are three guidelines, EEXI Calculation Guidelines, EEXI Survey and Certification Guidelines, and Shaft Engine Power Limitation Guidelines. We introduce the EEXI technical file specified in the EEXI Guidelines on Survey and Certification. The EEXI technical file is a kind of calculation sheet that contains basic information for EEXI calculation, which should be prepared for each ship that applied EEXI regulations. The EEXI technical file should include these contents. Then, we move on the final chapter. In this chapter, we will explain about how to approach to the EEXI requirement. We show the status of compliance with the EEXI requirement of our class ships. About 7,200 ships will be applied EEXI regulation, and about 5,300 ships are non-EEDI ships. About 1,900 ships have been applied EEDI regulation, however, about 750 ships does not comply with the EEXI requirement. It means that about 84% of our class ships will be required to carry out an EEXI improvement measure, such as EPL. The pie charts show the circumstances of each ship type. The percentages of ships required to improve EEXI are, 86% in bulk carrier, 73% in tanker, 80% in container ship, and 90% in gas carrier. This is a flowchart for ship owners and management companies, to judge whether any kind of action is needed or not for their fleet, in order to comply with the EEXI regulation. First of all, please confirm whether the ship has an attained DEDI or not. If yes, Please confirm the value of attained DEDI from the IEE certificate or EEDI technical file. The attained EEDI can be used as an alternative to the attained DEXI. Then, please calculate the ship's required DEXI, and check whether the attained DEDI is equal to or less than the required DEXI or not. If the attained EEDI satisfies the required EEXI, it can be said that the ship already achieves the EEXI requirement without any action. On the other hand, if the attained EEDI is more than the required EEXI, the ship's energy efficiency has to be improved by the measures, such as engine power limitation or installation of energy saving devices. Then, let's back to the first place. If the ship does not have an attained DEDI, you have to calculate the current attained DEXI. And then, please check whether the attained DEXI is equal to or less than the required DEXI or not. If the attained DEXI satisfies the required DEXI, improvement of ship's energy efficiency is not needed. While, in case the attained DEXI does not satisfy the required DEXI, Improvement of ship's energy efficiency is needed. Engine power limitation, EPL, is a major method for improving the EEXI. So, we will explain about the details of EPL from the next slide. EPL is a system to improve a ship's energy efficiency, by limiting the ship's engine power within the optimum engine setting. EPL consists of a simple device, which can easily limit the maximum engine power, 
by adjusting a fuel index limiter on the engine control system, without retrofitting a complicated system within the current regulatory framework. Another good point of VPL is, it can be easily installed in a short time during a port, without updating EIAPP certificate and the NOx technical file. EPL can be released in the adverse weather conditions. So, the limited engine power does not have to meet the minimum power requirement. For such a reason, EPL can be utilized as one of the effective measures to improve energy efficiency of existing ships, in terms of EEXI. We introduce the installation method of EPL. The method is different depending on the engine's control system. In case of mechanically driven type engines such as old engine type, setting of governor's fuel index limiter is changed, and the mechanical stop screw is adjusted, and then, the screw is sealed by wire and so on, as shown in the picture. In case of electronically controlled type engines such as new engine type, setting of governor's fuel index limiter is changed only. The electronically controlled type engine cannot be physically sealed, unlike the mechanical driven type engine. So, it is confirmed that the EPL had not been released without permission since the last confirmation, by checking the data recorded in the data logging program. The EPL guidelines require the following principal requirements. The available power is to be limited by locking fuel index. EPL cannot be released without permission from the shipmaster or the officer in charge of navigational watch. If EPL is unlimited due to the purpose of securing the safety of a ship or saving life at sea, the reason and relevant information are to be recorded in onboard management manual. EPL system should be tamper-proof. EPL system should be accompanied by onboard management manual for EPL that should be on board the ship for inspection. The onboard management manual is also required to include these contents. The unlimiting EPL is only allowed for the purpose of securing the safety of a ship or saving life at sea, consistent with Regulation 3.1 of MARPOL Annex 6. The specific examples are as follows. Operating in adverse weather and ice-infested waters, or avoidance voyaging in such areas. Participation in search and rescue operations. Avoidance of pirates. Engine maintenance. In addition, when the EPL is unlimited, the following must be implemented without delay. Next, this slide shows an example of improvement of EEXI by EPL. Generally, engine power is proportional to the cube of ship speed. Substituting this into EEXI calculation formula, it is found EEXI is proportional to the square of ship speed. Moreover, ship speed is proportional to the one-third power of engine power. Similarly, EEXI is proportional to the two-thirds of engine power. This table shows these relationships. For example, in the case where the engine power is limited at 65% MCR, the attained EEXI is improved by 20%. The ship speed is decreased by only 1.5 knots. EPL is a highly effective measure and a cost-effective solution to improve the ship's attained EEXI. So, EPL is the most effective measure for EEXI improvement. This slide shows an example of improvement of EEXI by Energy Saving Devices, ESD. ESD affects ship's performance and generally reduces required engine power about 3 to 7% on seagoing. However, ESD reflects only ship speed on the EEXI calculation. As shown here, the attained EEXI is improved by only about 1 to 3 percent. Since ESD cannot improve the EEXI significantly, 
we recommend to install the ESD, along with EPL. This is an example of improvement of EEXI by increasing dead weight. Attained EEXI can be improved by increasing dead weight. However, required EEXI becomes more strict simultaneously, because dead weight value is also used for the calculation of required EEXI. If dead weight is increased by 5%, the actual gain of EEXI becomes about 1.4%. In addition, when dead weight is increasing by draft up, some structural reinforcements may also be necessary. For such a reason, increasing dead weight may not be a cost effective solution to improve the ship's obtained DEXI. Next, we will explain the flow of the EEXI verification process. The EEXI verification process differs depending on whether the attained DEDI of the ship applied to the EEDI regulation satisfies the required DEXI or not. First, we will explain the verification process in the case the attained DEDI of the ship satisfies the required DEXI. In this case, the attained EEDI and the EEDI technical file of the ship can be used as an alternative to the attained DEXI and the EEXI technical file, so there is no need to prepare the EEXI technical file in advance. Please apply for the occasional survey of the E-certificate when you apply for the first periodical survey of the IAPP certificate on or after 1 January 2023. The attained EEDI and the EEDI technical file will be used as an alternative to the attained DEXI and DEXI technical file. We will confirm the approved DEDI technical file at the onboard survey and reissue the IEE certificate. Next, we will explain the verification process in other cases. In these cases, there are preliminary verification and onboard survey. The preliminary verification requires the EEXI technical file and relevant ship speed and fuel consumption data. If EPL is installed to improve the attained EEXI, the preliminary verification also requires the onboard management manual. The Marine GHG Certification Department of Class MK will examine the submitted EEXI technical file and onboard management manual. Upon completing the review, the Marine GHG Certification Department of Class NK will issue a preliminary verification report and return the examined EEXI technical file and onboard management manual. After receipt, you are requested to retain the examine DEXI technical file and OMM on board by the onboard survey. The onboard survey will be conducted at the first periodical survey of the IAPP certificate on or after 1 January 2023. Please apply for the occasional survey of the E certificate at the same time as the first periodical survey of the IAPP certificate after 1 January 2023. In order to perform the onboard survey, the preliminary verification needs to be completed in advance. At the onboard survey, the surveyor of Class NK will reissue the IEE certificate based on the examined EEXI technical file in the preliminary verification. In addition, if EPL is installed, the surveyor of Class NK will confirm that the EPL has been installed in accordance with the examined onboard management manual in the preliminary verification. Finally, here are some points of attention for complying with the XE regulations. First, for EEXI calculation, documents on VREF and SFC are required for EEXI calculation. EEXI value can be conservatively calculated by using the ship speed given by simple formula and the default value of SFC. However, calculation of accurate EEXI counts to minimize the ship's operation. Calculation of accurate EEXI requires the documents on speed power curve and tank test result provided by mother shipyard and SFC provided by engine manufacturer. Second, 
for engine power limitation, EEXI assessment beforehand is important to find the impact on ship's operation as ship's maximum speed will be reduced due to EPL. Installation of log recording device may be required due to EPL. Preparing beforehand is recommended to avoid congestion of EPL works as EEXI regulation applies to the existing ships all over the world. For EEXI verification by class Class approval of EEXI technical file and EPL onboard management manual is required. Some time is needed for review to confirm the evidence of speed power curve if ship's speed is calculated by speed power curve. Drawing approval and onboard inspection by class before 1 January 2023 is possible although EEXI regulation will take place at the first annual, intermediate or renewal survey of IAPP certificate on or after 1 January 2023. It takes time to complete the verification. If the preparation are outsourced, the cost for confirmation to EEXI regulation will be expected as Fee for making EEXI technical file and EPL onboard management manual Fee for data of speed power curve, tank test result, SFC Fee for EPL setting Fee for EEXI verification by class That is all for our presentation. We hope this presentation would be useful for your understanding and preparation for the EEXI regulation. Thank you for your attention.